So hello, my name's Rob and this is Cow Rabbit Scale Model Studios and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I finished off the last parts of my Lion, Lionel Johnson if you will. Um, really really good fun with this model, had an absolute blast with it. Uh, this video will mainly focus on the power armour but I will leave in the pinned comments any additional videos like the head magnetising video uh, down below. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out the description box for more information and do stick around after the power armour because I am going to show you how I painted some of the other parts of the model. So the lion. This is where I am with my model. Uh, the whole thing was sprayed with Corvus Black Primer and for this method I do recommend starting with a dark primer. It's probably not the easiest method and it does require a hell of a lot of patience although I do think a model like the lion demands a bit more patience just because of how nice the actual sculpt and the miniature kit is itself so I'm going to talk you through how I've done that. The first thing we are going to do is we're going to use Caliban Green and we're going to use some Army Painter Matte Black. I've been using this Matte Black a lot lately I really really like it it's a good substitute for Corvus Black um, but it dries completely flat but any kind of black with a more smokier tone will work for you. Another good one, Pro Acryl, they do a lovely coal black, that will work just as well. But for this video as well, I am going to use a wet palette and there's a good reason for that as well. So you can see here on my wet palette, I've got my Caliban Green and I've got my Matte Black. I'm just gonna mix a little bit into this. Now the reason why I insist on using a wet palette all the time, and a lot of people that talk to me about getting smooth finish on things, I always use a wet palette. It's really good if you struggle with watering down your paints and knowing the consistency to water them down to. For this, a wet palette is invaluable for a model like this to keep that finish nice and flat and really show off that detail. So all I do is I take a couple of drops of the matte black, mix it into my Caliban green till I'm somewhere between, I guess, dark black and Caliban green. Um, if you are gonna do this all in one go, I would recommend you mix up enough so you don't have to mix it, otherwise sometimes you do run the risk of uh, not mixing up the same color twice. But all I'm gonna do now is just using any old brush with a good point on it that's fairly big, I'm just gonna base coat the section of leg. You might need to do a couple of coats of this because the wet palette will water the paint down anyway, so it will be quite thin when it goes on. So if that's the case, just give it a couple of minutes to dry and it will dry really, really quickly, and then just reapply that until you've got a nice solid color. So that is a good base coat down. We've got a lovely smooth finish and this is exactly what we want to really show off that armor. The next step is we're gonna take some Caliban Green. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this to my wet palette, but this time I'm just gonna add some of the color that we previously applied into it. And then I'm gonna start working on those surfaces where the light would maybe just catch it a little bit. Things like where the armor flares out at the bottom, the top of the feet, the ridge across the knee pad, and the top section of leg that's protruding from his uh, tunic tabard type thing. Uh, always technical me there. Um, but just take your time again. You might find that it's a little bit subtle on the first application. This is great because then what we can do is we can go back with a second coat and just leave some of that first coat showing. And really help that blend in. So as you can see, we've got that lovely smooth base coat and that subtle fade on the armor that's just started to take shape. This is what I really, really wanted for this, as I really wanted to just show off a little bit of technical flair. Once again, it's fairly easy to do, as long as you're using a wet palette. Now the next step is I'm gonna get some Warpstone Glow. As always, I'm gonna use my wet palette, so this is gonna be thinned down. And for this, I do recommend you have a good brush. I like this little Red Grass Games uh, 2.0 brush. It's not the size two, it's a 2.0. But for this video, if you don't have a good brush, get yourself down to your local GW, pick up one of these little uh, small layer brushes. They hold a good point for a while, but it'll be perfect for the type of fine edge highlighting that I wanted to do on this. And I'd recommend just going the extra mile, just because it's, well, it's a Primark. Doesn't he deserve it? Guy's been asleep for thousands of years. Give him a break. But all I'm gonna do is making sure my brush isn't overloaded I'm just going to really slowly work my way around the model, 
just taking my time, making sure that that highlight goes on nicely, nice and thin, and that everything is nice and consistent. It's worth noting if you do mess up here, you could just mix up a little bit of the dark green again and just reapply that. Now our first set of highlights down, really you could kind of leave it here. And to be fair, if you didn't want to do the previous step with the neat Caliban, you could probably just leave it here. But I like to push it a little bit further. Here I'm going to use some Mook Green mixed in with Warpstone Glow again. Once again, all mix onto the wet palette. I'm not looking for that bright lime green Mook Green highlight. I just want to tone it down a bit and move it more to a more saturated green like Warpstone. But I do want to add a little bit of colour to it. Here I'm being really selective where I put my highlights. You don't need to highlight every part of the model. If that's your thing, fantastic. Go nuts. But me, I'm just going to look at where the light would hit. So things like the top of the knee pad, the ridge uh, on the armour panel at the top of the knee, and just where the groove in the armour panel is. Uh, running down, I'm just going to focus a little bit just towards the bottom there. Once again, take your time with this. Make sure your brush isn't overloaded and has always got a good point. there we go those armor panels are really standing out now and I think really here they look absolutely fantastic however I did just want to go that extra mile and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to get some real pure moot green straight out the pot obviously watered down a little bit on my wet palette and all I'm going to do is I'm going to dot it just on really sharp bits of armor so here you can see where the armor panels meet to a point I'm just going to dot a little bit of moot green things like the top of the knee pad there, giving that a really good effect, showing off the light hitting. Things like here, just on the edge of these little side panels, really just go the extra mile for such a lovely miniature. So there we are. That's really it for the armor. Just take your time. Let's see if edge highlighting isn't your thing, I'd probably recommend just being really selective and just taking your time for the ones that matter like the, the line running down the, the knee and stuff like that I'm now going to finish this guy off and I'm going to show you how I painted some of the other bits so there he is fully done don't worry I am going to show him off at the end of the video um, but here you can see these little cape sections this was completed the same way as the cloth but I just stuck to two colors so for the pale cloth it was your shabti bone and then Screaming Skull for the pink cloth, and same with the tops of the watchers. It was Screamer Pink and a highlight of Pink Horror. Obviously the robes on the watchers themselves uh, was still Legion Drab, and then a highlight of XV88. And then things like his, uh, gotta stop calling them hats, his helmet was just Mephist and Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, and then Wild Rider Red, and a fine highlight. However, the last thing I wanted to do just to help this model come to life, these Tamiya weathering kits. If you've never used them before, they're really, really easy to use and they just really help a model feel lived in. All I do is here, I get the little applicator brush, it comes with it, and all I do is I dust a little bit just around the feet, just to kind of sell the effect that he is where the base says he is. It just helps kind of really bring that miniature to life. And that's really about it. If you do have any comments about how I did of the, any of the other bits, uh, let me know in the comments below if there's a bit that I maybe missed out that I haven't covered. Uh, but that's really it. Um, this is a stunning model and it's taken me nine days to do this guy. I've had an absolute blast, especially chatting with everyone on Instagram and YouTube. So I must say a massive thank you to everyone that supported this project. But that's it for me in this one. I'll see you all next time. God bless and take care.